Why did God unite the man and his helper? This is the last point that I want to make with you tonight. This is fascinating. We've talked about the natural reasons that God gave the man his helper and brought them together. That the, the woman is to help the man subdue the earth. And the woman is to, to be with the man and to help him pop populate the earth. That was part of what God had given them. But let's look deeper and more spiritually at this. Why did God do this? And this is going to tie back to what we said earlier about the loss of children and the failures that we are having in the family and why God may be sending us home because we need to learn this lesson. In Malachi chapter 2, the very last book of the Old Testament, it is revealed the spiritual, the deeper spiritual reason that God united and created marriage, created the woman and the man and united them together. Let's look at this. What is happening here is they are being judged by God and their offerings are not being accepted. And they're complaining to God and asking Him why. Why, God, are you not accepting our offerings? And God gets on them about marriage. Look at this. He says, Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. What's happening here is these men, these men, have, have been putting away their wives in divorce so they can marry pagan women. They're not keeping covenant with the woman that God gave them in their youth when they were younger. They got older. Maybe they had a midlife crisis and they wanted, a, they wanted another woman. So they're putting these women away and God is saying, this is treachery. This is, this is disgusting and I will not have it. And This is why your prayers aren't being heard. And then He reveals something. But did He not make them one? That's the, remember, God made them one, having a remnant of the Spirit and why one? Why did God make them one? Why did God make, if you're married today, why did God make, and you're a Christian family, why did God unite you, man and woman? Why, you two, look at each other now and ask, why us? Why did He put us together? What is the role here? Look at this, here it is. Here comes the hammer. He seeks godly offspring. He seeks godly offspring. God has given you and your wife or you and your husband, however you want to say it, He has placed you together so that you can raise up children of such faith and character that they would be known as God's own children. He wants you to produce godly people. That is why you are together. And if your children are not in the faith, if your children have left the faith, and again, I'm not condemning you, I'm not looking down on you, but this key thing that God has designed for you to do has not been accomplished. He wants the children in His house, and that is why He united you. So let's go back and let's ask ourselves again, where are God's children? You say, well, Wes, why is God doing this to us? Why is He sending all the, the mothers and the fathers of the children home? Why is God bringing this coronavirus thing on us? Why is He doing that? Why would He even be upset? We're a perfect family, Wes. We go to church every Sunday. and we, Because He's losing His offspring. His children are going to hell, and He doesn't like it. And so He's taking us back to the starting line. He's saying, you need to start all over. You need to start all over. Where are they? You see why God is upset? You see why God is concerned? You see, And I know it hurts you. Again, I'm not poking fun. I'm not, I'm not making light. I'm not. I'm, I know it destroys you. I know it hurts you. I know it does. We've got to ask, us, ask ourselves why. God, we know this isn't God's will, so it has to be something that we're doing. We're departing from the design. And what I want to do over the next few weeks is I want to go into this design a little bit more clearly, a little bit more closely. And I want to look at, uh, first I want to look at Christian mothers. How have Christian women fallen off of this design and been a part of that formula for losing the children. I want to look at Christian men and Christian fathers and say, how are these? How are our men falling from this design and adding to this uh, loss of the children? And then thirdly, I want to look at the education and training of children and see how have the mother and father together in the education and training of the children provided a situation and a context whereby the children are lost to the world. That's what we want to do over the next few weeks. And we'll start next week with the failure of Christian mothers.